we will continue with setting up our tests with Rep.io, uh, with Source Labs um, to do more cross-browser testing. So our tests can stay the same. All we need to do is now changing our configuration. Um, the first thing we do, if you look into our workshop, um, so we will skip test uh, two and three, um, and we'll go to set up in the Source Apps Cloud. In order to integrate Source Apps, all we need to do is add a little service that will help us connect with Source Apps easier. Um, WebDriver has a plugin that makes that possible very easily. And you can install that plugin by calling the install command and you install the source service. So we go ahead and do that. Um, oh, interesting, that fails. Um, we can also just do it manually. Um, install uh, or yarn in this case. I think it gets a little bit chucked up because of that. Uh, so yarn at, um, at WDO source service. So this will add a source service to our package JSON. Um, and so this will help us to connect to source. Um, so now we want to add another environment for our testing. We want to continue to test our application locally. Um, but when it comes to running our test in CI CD, uh, we want to you know, take this workload and give it to source and run it in their, on their platform so we can scale up our testing or multiple browsers running them on the same time. For that, we recommend to have different configuration file, different web driver configuration files. Um, so one for local testing and the other one for end-to-end uh, -end test in on source labs. So what we want to do is to create uh, two types, two new files that help us to run tests on source uh, or help us to run tests locally. Um, so I will create a new file. Um, uh, yeah. And basically I want to uh, save this as wdolocal.conf.ps. It's our local configuration uh, for running tests locally. And we copy everything that we have in our WDO config. And in order to not duplicate ourselves, we import our base config from w.conf.js, and then we inherit everything that is in our base config. Oh, that is in our base config. Um, we inject that into our object, and then we can remove everything that will not change no matter which environment we are running. And those are like the TypeScript configuration, the spec files usually always stay the same. Um, so we can remove those. In terms of capabilities, um, for local testing, we usually only want to run one Chrome. So we keep that. Uh, we don't do, for local testing, we, it's not much needed. You can obviously you know, test cross-browser locally, um, but for developing tests, I usually, it's recommend to run at one browser and then see if it verifies on other browser too. And we can all remove, um, the we can everything will be removed because it stays the same. The reporter stays the same. The mockup stays the same. So our configuration for local testing will be that um, we will run um, on Chrome <coughs> locally, and that's it. Um, so now we can update our package JSON. We can update our co test command, our WDO command to use our local config. Um, next, we will create a config for source labs. For that, we create another file we call wdosource.conf.ts. And we do the same, the same trick. We just copy everything from our main file. Um, we inherit from it as we do it here. And now we specify a specific configuration for running on source. Um, so in here, for source apps, we want to run on multiple browsers. Um, so in this case, I will just add some more capabilities. Um, so I want to say I want to run on Firefox as well. I want to run on 
Microsoft Edge, and I want to run on the fire. And Sauce Labs, Safari. Sauce Labs will make sure to give you the right browser. And then in terms of services, that will change here too. Um, we will not only use the Next service, but we also will use our Sauce service that we have installed. And I think important here is that we enable Sauce Connect. Um, Sauce Connect is a tool um, that the service provides you and Sauce Apps provides you that helps you to bridge your local application and your local environment to the Sauce Cloud. So Sauce can access the application that you have run locally through a secure tunnel. And so this way we can develop our app locally and test it on many devices and browsers in the cloud. The rest will stay the same. We will continue to use the same framework, same reporters, same mock-ups, and we can just remove the rest of the configuration. So our web developer config for SaaS will look like this. Uh, we have extended capabilities. We have the same base config, but we have we add more capabilities and we add the SaaS service to our configuration. You can find more information about the SaaS service in our docs. Um, in services, you can find the SaaS service. You can see what it does, how you can configure it. You can see here um, how to enable Source Connect. And you can even you know, provide some additional information to your capabilities now, uh, which we will do. Uh, Source provides you to give your test a name, to add it to a build. Um, so why not do that? And let's say we add Source options to our capabilities to give our, to bundle our test into, or how about we just name our tests? Um, or no, just do a build. Give it a build name, so build one, two, three. That can be like an environment variable that your CI provides you. And we need to provide this um, source option for every capability. So. Sauce Apps knows that this is one, one test run in your CI CD system or locally. Um, so that's about it. So we can now add a source command to our package JSON. We can say, okay, whenever I want to run WDL on source, I want to use my source configuration. So now we have a command for local testing and we have a command for source testing. And we can just copy that and run it and test it. So you can now see Source Connect boots up, um, and WebDriver will run four parallel sessions after the next application is started. So Source Apps now connects to my local machine securely, and they fail. Um, it fails because we have to provide a user and a key. Um, so Source Apps needs to know who we are. Um, and we added that. We, you can see this as a pre-step to our, um, to our, in our workshop, we have to use our credentials um, in order to authenticate with Source, in order to know which user should run these tests. Um, you can see that we use environment variables because it's not recommended to add, you know, secure information as a plain text. So environment variables are the way to go. Um, I've set this up myself. So if I, I print source username, it will give me my username that I think I created in 2014, almost nine years ago, uh, on the source platform. Um, so I have these configurations set up. You can add them into your .n file, and WebDriver will pick these up automatically. Um, so in order to authenticate with Source, we add a user and the key um, to our Source configuration. And let's run this again. Hey, Christian, can you quickly show where to fetch the Source username and access key, please? Absolutely. For so everyone. Oh, yeah, let me log into So Let's just see how the test finishes. Now, all four browsers start up at the same time. 
and you can see them running through the application. So we have a passing test in Firefox, passing test in Firefox Edge, and Safari and Chrome. So Webdriver will shut down the tunnel, and you can see that our tests pass on these environments. So we didn't specify anything particularly in terms of we didn't specify a browser version nor platform. So SourceFed just gave us what, what is available. And usually that's something on Windows for Firefox. So we start, we were using Firefox version 113 um, for Firefox on Windows. We were running Microsoft Edge uh, version 113 on Windows 2. We use Safari 16 on Mac OS and Chrome 114 on Windows. And you get a little link so you can see what happened. You can press that and you can now see that. Hey, Christian, could you make that bigger? It's really small. Yes. <clears throat> Thank you. So you can now see how WebDriver executed that in the cloud. You see the browser starting. Um, you see that it tried to find the commands and had to retry a couple of times, like to find the proper element. Um, that is completely normal. Um, <clears throat> WebDriver has a retry mechanism in place to make sure that you can it finds the right element that you want. Um, in order to get the credentials, um, you have to log into Sauce. Um, so I will do this real quick. And so. Could you make the screen a little bigger, please? Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Um, now you see the full automated test that I was just running. Um, the title actually comes from this test that I have. It will take this title and will uh, title the name of the test properly. You saw we were running on those uh, four machines. You can also see that in our builds, we now have a build um, that, you know, uh, puts all these four tests of that specific build in a bucket, and you get some details about the build. Um, in order to get your credentials, um, you will see this little icon on the top that represents your account. And so you go into user settings, and then you will see your username and your access key. Um, so I will have to regenerate this one. Um, but you will see the username here, and the access key here. So I will regenerate. Uh, actually, you can also you can also click the little key in the if you go back to the UI. Oh yeah, Christian. Oh, you already left. Sorry. You can click the little key next to the search icon. It'll display. Uh, key, oh. Yeah, that, uh, one more. Yep, yep. Click that oh, and perfect. there. Exactly. Very easy. Yeah, you can just press this, copy it, and put it into your environment variable. That's awesome. One one good thing we improved. <laughs> so how how are things looking? Any further question? Uh, yes, Christian. One request, please. Can you push this up into a new branch in our repo because uh, someone wanted your config files? Absolutely. So we'll. <clears throat> I will call the branch live coding and I will put all of that. I don't need package logs. So just keep it that file. Yeah, so the branch should be up now under life coding right here. So now in your in your terminal you can git checkout or you can first it fetch minus minus all to fetch all the branch that I just pushed. And then you can say git checkout um, live coding. 
yeah, a further thing that is nice when running tests on the cloud is that you get a bunch of you know additional assets um, that you can use. You can see the screenshot. You can see how your page is loading slowly. Um, and you can see a bunch of logs that help you to um, basically see what has been going on, which web driver requests have been made, um, which responses you got. Um, you see a bunch of metadata and obviously there are a bunch of, you know, um, additional capabilities SOS provides you like accessibility testing um, and error reporting, I think, you know, Maybe you, Nikolai, can speak a little bit more about that. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, it's exactly as Christian said. Um, after you run it in SOS, you can expand it beyond to do accessibility testing with WebDriver.io. Um, that accessibility testing is really easy, way easier than functional testing because you just include the library that you want, which is X, and then just point to a URL, and then the tool does all the analysis of the website for you and tells you, what kind of errors you have and what needs to be fixed and so on. You can also do front end performance testing um, as well. And so those will show you information like how fast is your website loading, um, jankiness and so on. This is using Google Lighthouse behind the scenes. And then as Christian talked about, there's also insights that you'll get as well, which will basically gather all your tests together and show you a high level overview of what's going on inside of your automated testing from all of your testing. Uh, yeah, Christian, if you just go to the insights uh, tab on the left, yep, exactly, and just click test overview. Yeah, so it would basically show you that. So as you're running, right, you're gonna be doing more testing than just four tests, but you'll be able to see the test executions, your pass rates, if you scroll down a bit, you'll be able to see like which browsers and operating systems you're covering, their pass and fail rates, and you can dig into that information and take appropriate action. Our failure analysis is cool too. Whenever you have failed tests, we will group similar failures that we determine using AI algorithms, similar failures together and show you like, hey, the, uh, these tests have been failing for this pattern and there's a hundred failures of those. You might want to take a look versus like, hey, this one test failed for this pattern. There's only one occurrence of that, maybe a less important whenever. And so it allows you to prioritize where you focus your fixing of your automated tests. Uh, pa Pablo, hey, Christian, Pablo asks about mobile browsers. Um, yeah, certainly it's possible. Yep, you can uh, run in mobile browsers, uh, meaning that, right, you can run in mobile web, which is just a web browser on a mobile device. And Christian is pulling that up. Christian, if you could make that bigger, please. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so you can do real, you can do in real devices, um, or of course, you can just run in a mobile viewport size just on a desktop, which is not as realistic. Better to just run on a real mobile device, which is one of the best benefits of Sauce Labs, in my opinion, because which one of us has all the mobile devices available to be able to execute on. Um, and then you can also do uh, native mobile testing. So if you're developing native mobile apps, um, you can do that as well. And Christian is showing right now how to make this possible. Um, yeah, just ignore this error for now. Not sure where that has come from. Um, I think, yeah, so yeah, I just added another uh, capability to run um, our tests on a mobile device. Um, so platform name is IRS. Um, I think because there's no platform name in capability, so we can do, we should do this, um, maybe not. Anyway, um, browser name Safari, and then we can test on a real iPhone simulator. Um, we can, uh, we move the build and the name that's important. Maybe copy out the rest to just have it run there. Is it complaining about this? Um, we, can, we can remove that. So um, 
yeah, so this will run on Appium um, on SAUCE using an iPhone simulator. And so when we now run this again and paste. Oh, this was running locally. Um, not one to test on local. Shutting this down. Um, let me remove the pause in here and run the source config. So now we see on Sauce Labs, we should see a test spinning up any second. Let's media reload. There we go. On an iOS 16.2 iPhone simulator. And we can just watch the test happening in real time. For simulators and emulators and real devices, tests obviously take a little bit longer to start and boot up because there's you know, and simulators are much more heavier process than a simple browser. There's a lot of more automation involved in the background. Um, so that's why, you know, um, this takes a bit longer, but you can see the iPhone spinning up on the machine. Uh, but, but a real device, uh, like a real mobile device is way faster than emulators and simulators. Oh yeah, okay. Cause yeah, because it's actually just, it's a real device we have hooked up in our data center that's sitting waiting for commands right and there. It's just spinning up your browser and doing stuff while, as Christian mentioned here, actually you have to boot up an actual device in terms of like a simulator or an emulator and that takes time and processing power. Yeah, I think I did a test where I ran the same speed of tests. Maybe it was like 10 tests. Um, across MUSIM versus real devices, and my real device tests were like ten times faster. Oh, okay. So well. I just I made a, I mean I made a decision and said I I'll never test on emulators and simulators because there's no point, especially because I have free access to Sauce Labs. Gotcha. Yeah, if you have the yeah if you have devices available, um, and if your account on Sauce has the devices available, that's definitely a better alternative. But the and, and that brings us to like some differentiation between WebDivel and Sauce Labs versus other test framework out there. You know, with WebDivel, since it is based, since it is using uh, you know web standards for automation, um, it can basically connect to everything. Um, so you can run your tests on a real iOS device or on a simulator or on a real Android device on, or in an emulator, and the test command stays the same. Um, which means that you can establish a cross device and functional like setup in your com uh, company um, that uses the same framework all over. While other tools, um, they work great too, but they might mostly have, often have limitation when it comes to, you know, automating on different devices and different browsers um, or automating things on, um, on the application itself. Um, so, <clears throat> With WebDriver and Sauce, you can run your tests everywhere, um, and to, you know use the same framework for all, for all environments. So now you can see the test running. Our application is still loading. There we go. Now we're on the login page. Now we can see how the page behaves for mobile. Yeah, definitely real devices would be faster here than simulate. Could we after try a real device and see how it performs versus this? Um, I don't have the credentials for real devices. You don't have you don't have any real device access? No. Um... So now we see our application has failed because when we accessed we can debug this. It seemed like our application never loaded correctly on a mobile device, which I don't, 
I haven't developed the application, so I don't know why on mobile it wasn't, you know, you see that the next application never spun up. I don't know why that is for mobile, but it's basically a bug that we just discovered. And we can try to run this again, but it's an interesting find. You want to try to run on my account? Uh, yeah, you can give me, I mean, it's hard to, let me stop sharing and you can maybe give me your credentials. Awesome. Um, so, okay, I set up uh, the credentials and I go, Source has this platform configurator that allows me to select um, the environment. Um, maybe, um, uh, Nikolai, maybe you can help me. Oh, here, application. Is it uh, where? What's the difference for simulator? Uh, yeah, versus... go, uh, go to browser. Okay, platform name. So, yeah, the difference is now that we have a device name, uh, mm -hmm. which is specific um, and tells Sauce Labs to open an actual iPhone. Um, so, let's see if that will run. Okay, yeah, device name is an Appium. It's an Appium thing, so make sure that you prefix those properly. Um, uh, okay, yeah. Um, yeah, see, I need to run browser tests. So probably I need to add browser name instead of app accessing uh, application, which you can do, we have to add Chrome as a browser name, right? Um, Appium Web, or yeah, uh, yes, you got it exactly. Uh, browser name, yep. <clears throat> browser name, platform name, you got, yeah, that looks good. So explain, uh, Nikolai, do the sauce give me one of those devices, like an iPhone? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Great question. Yeah, that's a regex to p help you get one of those devices. Okay, whatever you, is you can point to. Yeah, whatever's available, you can point to a specific one. We have like dozens, if not, you know, a hundred of each one. So like, for example, what's the latest iPhone? I think 14, right? So that one is super high in demand. Everyone wants to use iPhone 14. So you probably have like a hundred or a few hundred of those, but because everybody wants to use them, a lot of times they're, they might not be available. So you might want to use a regex that if you just want to check your app on an iPhone, uh, this will make sure that you get something back. Yeah, did since it, it Connect is not enabled for public cloud, so I would just... Uh, yeah. Oh, your Sauce Connect is not enabled for public cloud? I mean, your Sauce Connect. <laughs> oh, my Sauce Connect. What? So let's just do a website that's publicly accessible. Do the same and run it on a real device. Yeah, that'll be better. I was just so curious how the Knox app would have worked. <clears throat> but it's all good. Yeah. Oh, that's also not working. Oh, because it's still using Sauce Connect. One second. We have to disable Sauce Connect. Um, so we can just keep Sauce as a service, but remove the rest. And on this again. All right. I'm seeing something cute here. Oh, yeah. My window. Yeah. And I can share after. Um, Actually, yeah, I can share now if you want. It's up. It's up and something ran. It's here. It fair because I guessed the title. I didn't exactly know the title of the web website, but <clears throat> yeah. So here's the test um, that ran my BJS application failed on 
uh, iOS 13, iPhone 8 Plus. Here's a test. Here's the commands that I try to execute. I did fail. Um, I expected Windows test. to have title, but got this WebDriver IO next gen browser mobile. Um, and here's the test. And you can see how way faster it is than an ME sim. Because it's, it's already up and running. Nothing has to be booted. All right, sweet. That's all. That's all for me. I think. Thanks. Thanks for trying that, Christian. And hopefully that helps, Pablo. Hey, and thank you so much for tuning into the test automation experience. If you enjoyed the show, please don't forget to give the show a thumbs up, subscribe down below, and if you have any questions about what you saw, any comments, comment below. I respond to every single comment. And thanks so much for your time. And see you next time.